that may happen where, let's say I'm a physician or let's say I'm an insurance agent or, you know, and, and, or a scientist. And I notice that, you know, the data fits a common set of patterns that we've been looking for. Right. And, and that may actually lead to less creativity because we run it through the patterns and then we make a decision on the patterns and we think we know everything when in reality we haven't spent much time discovering new patterns or looking for different patterns that exist there. And so I think both actually have to happen. I mean, I, I, I can't, I, I wasn't around, but I distinctly remember these conversations when people would say in the six, in the 1960s, people were like, we've discovered everything. All the innovations of ever, ever, mankind have all been discovered. We won't have anything else to look forward to, right? A very bold, a very ignorant statement at the time. Um, and so when we think that just when everything is all settled, it fits within wonderful unifying universal theories, then something else happens. <laughs> so I think. I think what will happen though is we'll standardize on a set of patterns and get 60 to 70% of the use cases correct. And maybe through that standardization, hopefully we push humanity forward and we look at what the new patterns are, how they emerge and how they change because we've automated the more common patterns so that it allows us to push the envelope and move ourselves forward. I don't know if everybody will have the same opportunity and access to think outside of the system, right? If these cognitive systems are doing really well, then do we still need human judgment? And if we have work that doesn't require human judgment, I don't think we're going to be employed. <laughs> so um, we had Michael Mandelbaum come speak at our Innovation Summit last year. And I think a number of folks asked him after talking about the future of the world and what's happening with you know work in you know, 20, 30 years out and competitiveness in countries, and the basic conclusion most of us came out with was you were better off as a poet, something very creative, right? That couldn't be automated yet, right? Or you were better off as a painter or artist because, you know, or, or a plumber, sorry. So you're better off as a poet or, or, or pa painter, or you're better off as a plumber or something with a hands-on skill that couldn't be replaced by machines yet because everything else was going to be automated you know, lawyers and decisions were going to be automated. Physicians were going to have, you know, supplemental, you know, human computer-based aided decisions, right? And when you think when that happens, when these cognitive systems show up, if I don't take the suggestion that was offered by the system, will I be at risk for liability? Will I at risk for being sued because I'm thinking outside the box? So what I'm actually more afraid of is not that the technology is going to constrain us. It's going to be the legislative and the policies that people create that actually constrain me to believe that the computer is going to be more accurate, more reliable, and more precise than human judgment. And it probably is true in 80 to 90% of the use cases, but that one scenario or that, you know, that 10% or human judgment and that instinct and gut, right, going back to the Malcolm Gladwell book, Blink, right, or the human intuition might actually be more correct than pure logic or an algorithm. You know, that's the piece of humanity that I will never relinquish, right? I, I just have to believe that we might know something that the computer doesn't know, which is why we, we are in existence. <laughs>